No, and he's done. And Joker falls from his machine. And as you see, we were on a solitary island. And it explodes. And Batman leaves. And yeah. And now you see the whole island will explode. And it's taken care of, a whole bunch of explosion, and just completely disappears from sight, I guess. It just imploded on itself. And as Batman flies away from the island, we get to see all the great people that worked on this game at the bottom. So yeah, that's Batman Return of the Joker. In the end, it ends up being a, a much shorter game than the first Batman game on the NES, which is, of course, unfortunate, because it is a good game and had some cool gameplay mechanics that they added to this game. But I think it's just the whole thing that the first one was the first Batman game I had, and I played a lot. I didn't play this one as much as the first one, so... My love definitely resides with the first Batman title on the NES more than this one, but, um... This game is still a ton better than the third Batman title that came out on the NES, which is Batman Returns. Which we'll be getting to very soon, so be, uh... Look forward to playing that great game. Because it was actually made by Konami, and not made by Sunsoft. They decided to move the license or whatever, so you think Konami would be a great title. But it does end up, it does end up having great music, but it falls in the gameplay department, and it just ends up being a very difficult, very challenging, pain-in-the-butt style game. But, uh, so this one definitely is a lot better than that one. So I basically rank them in the order they came out. Batman on the NES, Batman Return of Joker, and then Batman... 3 Batman Returns, if it really even counts because it wasn't made by Sunsoft. But there's the end screen, and here comes the classic Sunsoft blue screen at the very end here. Presented by Sunsoft. So there we go, that's going to wrap up another edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.